So I've been seeing um, several different devotions about peace. And then our pastor spoke about it yesterday at church. And then Becky sent me a devotion. And it was just like everything um, that I've been reading all came together. And so yesterday, Brother Tim talked about Jehovah Shalom and how in Israel, Shalom, which means peace, is used as a greeting. And people will actually just walk up to each other and greet each other that way. And so I thought that was um, an interesting fact that I didn't know. But um, the title of this lesson, Jehovah Shalom, I read this this week from a source called Understanding the Gospel. It said this occurs only once in the Bible, and it's in Judges 6, 24, um, when, Gid when Gideon, excuse me, when Gideon had built the altar, and it says, then Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, the Lord is peace. The English phrase, the Lord is peace, translates in Hebrew, Jehovah Shalom. The name Jehovah conveys the thought of being or existing or being known while the term shalom refers to soundness, completeness, harmony, and the absence of strife. It is best rendered by our English word of peace. And when, you, uh, when I googled peace, if it was not a religious um, connotation, it was referred to in these ways, uh, being accepted for who we are. You know, if we feel like people would just accept us, we would have peace. Um, having comfort when things are just good enough. So I think that's the quest of always wanting more. If I could just be like so-and-so, if I could just look like them, if my house was just that neat, if my children could be that good, all of those things just um, to be just good enough. I don't think we ever arrive at that. And if that's how we're getting our peace, then we probably will never arrive at it. Um, a stress-free state of security and calmness. You know, we always think if we have peace, we're not going to have stress and um, we're going to be feel calm on the inside and um, freedom from disturbance or a state or period in which there is no war. So all of those things um, we hear peace referred to or people feel like some of those situations could give them peace. But what the Bible says about peace is that um, we will have trouble. So that's just given we're never going to be in a constant state of calmness. We're always going to have trouble. And John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. So John 16, 33, um, it says right there that we are going to have trouble. We can expect it. We're never going to have um, a stress-free life, but take heart. I have overcome the world, and through him, we can have peace. The Bible also says that God's peace is different from the world's peace. And John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled, and do not be afraid. So here again, the world, the what the world's definition of peace is going to be different from God's definition. Um, he gives us peace. The world is not. We're going to be having trouble and we're going to be having conflicts. And if our peace comes from only feeling calm based on our experiences and our situation, then we're probably never going to be in a peaceful situation um, on the inside. God's peace is permanent. So the, the world's peace definitely fluctuates based on our mood and our situation. But God's peace is permanent. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. So we can always have his peace. It's always a resource. Um, it's always there for us to, um, to exercise. And it really is an exercise that we have to be mindful of. And God's peace is an active process. And this is where I'm saying it is something that we have to be active in implementing. So Philippians 4, 6 through 7, we probably all can recite this voice, this verse. 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, that's the part that's active on our part. With thanksgiving, that's something we have to be actively doing. Present your request to God and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So we have to be praying and petitioning and uh, rejoicing and offering thanks. And when we are staying in that close uh, relationship, then we are going to feel his presence and we're going to feel his peace that is unmoved and it's always there. And it's something that we can always count on. Um, another part of it being an active process, Isaiah 26, three through four, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you, trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, the Lord himself is the rock eternal. And I love that, that he is the rock eternal and that our minds have to be steadfast. That means we can't even start letting our mind wander into the what ifs or letting our minds wander into the figuring out how our situation is going to um, unfold or what's going to transpire that we have to, you know, know the answers to. We have to keep our minds steadfast on him and his promises and the fact that he is our rock and um, then we are able to you know put his peace into action this is part of the the devotion that becky sent from proverbs 31 ministries they have great devotions and um, this is just a portion of it the hebrew word for the phrase stayed on that's used in this verse is samak I'm not saying that right. Samak, I think is it. Samak, which means to brace, uphold, support. Amazing, huh? In other words, those whose minds fully braced, upheld, and supported by truth and trust in God will be kept in perfect peace. The English phrase perfect peace means an all-embracing peace. It is God, by the power of his indwelling spirit, giving us the strength internally to face whatever comes our way externally. This doesn't mean our circumstances will feel peaceful. It doesn't mean all our relationship troubles and hardships suddenly get better, nor does it mean the prayers we pray suddenly all get answered. But what it does mean is our mind can be steadied with truth instead of overrun with thoughts of fear, anxiety, in worst case scenarios. So I love the part about um, when our minds are fully braced, upheld, and supported by truth. And the analogy she used was um, the author of this devotion said that she had a ceiling in her house that was starting to give way because the beam was not braced correctly. And how that brace was the support, it held up that ceiling. And so that was, it was critical, but that was strong. And so for us, our minds have to be fully braced that way. And we have to constantly be aware of our thinking in order to, um, to support um, this feeling of peace that we have access to. So this whole lesson made me think of my, my friend, Rochelle, who you've heard me talk about a lot. She's also known as Salty Sister. And if you haven't followed her on Facebook, I highly recommend it. She has some really great lessons. And one of her lessons is um, she gives a testimony and it's such a heart-wrenching story. I can't even begin to tell it and I wouldn't want to, but she was on a trip in a different state and she gets a phone call that would be a parent's worst nightmare. And she's far away from home. There's nothing she can do about it. And she said she just felt God wrap her. And the only way she can describe it is he wrapped her in his spiritual duct tape. And I've heard her refer to that multiple times that she just felt him hold her, literally hold her together like she had been wrapped up tight in duct tape. So I started thinking about that today as I was preparing this lesson. And I did a little research on duct tape and it was, it's interesting how it came about. It was um, during World War II, a woman who was working in a factory where they were making duck cloth, which is where the name duct tape came from. They were making duck cloth for um, military purposes. And it's essentially cotton fabric that is woven. 
these crisscross layers, um, and then a waterproof layer is attached to it. So it, it was meant to be a waterproof um, material for military purposes, I guess. And this lady who was working in that factory came up with the idea of putting a sticky surface on the other side of it so that they could um, protect some of the boxes that they were sending. The supplies were getting wet. And so that is where the idea for duct tape came from. And so the, I just started thinking about the different qualities of duct tape. And they kept talking about how strong it is. You know, they, hang, they were hanging like tons of weight from these strips of duct tape. And it's strong because of those woven layers of cotton inside, layer upon layer. And that reminds me of our many prayers and our scripture reading, our scripture memory, and the application of his truth um, builds that strength and the confidence that helps us be strong Christians who can live in peace despite our circumstances. It's water repellent. Um, that outer layer, uh, water will just run right off of it. And that made me think about how worry and strife should roll off of us as we think about that woven layer that's underneath um, the prayers and the scripture that we can apply. And then on the other side, it's sticky. And so that made me think of um, just like Rochelle, he will hold us together when we feel like everything is just falling apart. And so this week I wanted to use duct tape in my journal. And I also found this drawing that I thought was really uh, beautiful, but um, it's, you, they're using cool colors, which uh, cool colors are blues and greens and warm colors are reds and oranges and yellows. Now, I love the fact that they used cool colors on this page. And then I, I loved the idea of using um, duct tape on to create tabs. And I think a lesson on peace is a good one that I want to go back to these verses over and over again. I wanna be reminded about this lesson. So I'm uh, gonna be showing you how I made a tab in my journal using duct tape. So at this point, I'll um, share my journal. I wrote this out as close to that picture as I could Using a pencil, I just use the bubble letters to write out he, just like that, and then is. And you know, not worrying about keeping these all straight because that picture wasn't. And then I did kind of a fancy cursive for the word peace. And then what I learned from doing this one, this letter I did dark. If you start with a dark color, it's going to be hard to add darker colors on top to give it that watercolor look. And the picture I showed you was actually done with watercolors. But you know, my, ex my example with watercolors last week was kind of a flop, although I think it turned out. So my idea is to just do this with big sweeping strokes. And then I want to come down and create some of these spaces that I could add different colors just on those down strokes. You can see they're open. And then I wanna come in with some of these darker colors and add just a, just a hint of that. And I might take a lighter green, just come in and add a little bit. And then maybe this, this one here, I may do some little lines. Then if you got one of these silver pens from the Dollar Tree, that's where I made the dots on he. And I thought I would do that on is, and um, maybe just on these blue strokes. So just playing around to give that a real watercolor feel. But I'm gonna put a verse right here. And then for using duct tape, I wanted to, you know, duct tape is not necessarily pretty unless you buy all of that um, fancy tape. And I don't have it. I have two colors here, kind of a lime green and black. But 
when you tear that, you can see the little fibers that give it the strength and the water repellent side that makes it flexible and then the sticky side that holds it together. And I just took some index cards and I wrote out the verses that were in our lesson, which I will post the lesson on Facebook and you can go back and look at it again. I laid it down on the page. This is how I did this one. I took a pencil and I just traced around the outer edge like that so that I would know where this card is gonna go. And you'll see up here that I wrote a verse underneath and I tried to write it inside that box that I drew that way it wouldn't be coming out the edges and I could kind of um, plan. And I had a little bit of extra space so I put some washi tape up there but I used the, sorry about that, I used the duct tape to create that hinge and so I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to, going to lay that card down and take my other piece of duct tape and stick it right down. So now I have another hinge and I'll put another one of my verses here. Then on this side, I took the other piece of duct tape and I stuck it on one side, then I folded it over and I folded it back and left it sticking out just enough to create a tab. So now when I see my journals closed and I see that tab, I know that's my duct tape lesson and I know it's talking about peace. This is my other tab and I knew it was the summer slide. So I could go straight to it. Um, and that's where my lesson, my series of lessons on confidence, that's where that starts. So I love having these little tabs and I would highly suggest if you have any of these lessons that were your favorites, like I find myself going back to this one a lot, I should take some duct tape, um, maybe a color that goes along with it, you know, like maybe this gold, and I could make a tab on the edge of that page that would let me quickly get back to it. So those are just some of my ideas for this week, and I hope you all have fun with it.